Welcome to today's coffee break. Today we're going to talk about purchase order processing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new purchase order and we're going to receive our goods with some variations. And I'm going to show you a setup that you might not be aware of um, just to help you with that process. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm logged in as a purchasing agent. So because I'm logged in that way, my role tailor or my role tailor client or my role center has this new purchase order connection right here, shortcut right in the middle of my screen. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And that's going to open up a new purchase order for me. And at this point, I need to select my vendor. So I happen to know my vendor number. If I didn't know my vendor number, I could start typing the name. So we're going to purchase from Progressive Home Furnishing. And once I start typing the name, I need to change the column that's being searched. So right now it's looking for the number. I'm just going to click a name and there they are. Right, so depending on the piece of information you have, you just tell it where to look and it will find that piece of information. So I've pressed enter and the vendor name and address and everything has come up so I can confirm that this is the correct vendor. And I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten that up a little bit so you can see the lines better. Now I wanna enter the lines that I'm ordering. So in this case, I'm going to order three desks. So my type is item. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the item number, which is 1896 Athens Desk. Okay. Description pops up. The location is my blue warehouse. That's where I'm bringing this in. And my quantity is the order, the quantity that I'm ordering. So I'm ordering three. And my cost comes up. And I just want to confirm that everything looks okay. And right now, it's defaulting to quantity to receive three. That's a setup. Um, and basically what it does, it just makes it easy for you later, easier for you later on when you receive the goods. It's already populated for you. Some companies don't like that. They want to leave that blank so that the, the person processing the receipt of the goods actually has to go in and put the number in. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. But right now, it's defaulting to, to the quantity that's been ordered. I'm going to enter another line on here that will be for the freight. So for this, I'm gonna choose a GL account and I happen to have a delivery GL account that I use. There we go. And this will be a quantity of one and I can put in the anticipated amount. If I know it, if I don't know it, I can certainly leave it blank. So at this point, this purchase order is ready to be released and sent to the vendor. So I'm just gonna go up here and click on release. Okay, and if I want, I can print the order. I'm gonna go ahead and preview this so you can see it. This is actually set to a Word document, which is another feature in the system where you can have uh, your standard nav reports or you can sort of create your own within Word. So this is what that looks like. Or I can click on send, and if I have sent, um, created a document sending profile on my vendor card, it will go to that profile and look to see how this particular vendor likes to have their purchase orders received. So if they want them emailed, um, that will be, this will prompt for emailing. If they want them faxed, it will default to fax. If they want them printed, again, you can just print them. So that's another option that's available in the system. This is yes. I'm gonna go ahead and press cancel. I didn't connect this to my email yet. Um, but anyway, I just want you to know that you have different choices for sending or different options for sending the PO to the vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of the screen for a minute. And I want to show you the setup that changes that quantity uh, to receive. So if I go to purchase and payables setup, you have this field right here, which is the default quantity to receive. Right now it's set to remainder. You can choose blank. Again, some people, it's you're always going to receive in full, and it's just easier and faster. It's just more efficient to leave um, the quantity to receive at whatever was ordered. If that's not the case for you, and you want people to always evaluate the quantity that was received and key it in, then you'll want this to be blank. So that's where that setup is. All right, so at this point, we've created our purchase order. We released it. We sent it to the vendor and now the goods have come in. So somebody needs to come into the system and let us know that the goods were received. So what we'll do is we'll just go to 
our purchase orders. And here's the purchase order that we created. And I'm going to double click on that to open it up. At this point, if I've received all three desks and my um, delivery, you know, came in, there's one delivery, everything's great. I could just leave these quantities and I could go to uh, post and I could just receive the goods. But let's say there's a back order. Let's say that we only received two of the desks that we ordered. Well, then I'm going to want to change this quantity to receive to two. And you might want to increase the quantity on the shipping to two if you're going to get a second charge. All right. So that, that will be your call. Um, usually the person doing the receiving wouldn't do that. Somebody in accounting would change that quantity to two if we were anticipating a second charge for the freight. So at this point, I'm just saying, all right, we received two two of the desks, and eventually we'll get an invoice for the shipping charge. So I'm going to leave that blank. And at this point, when I post, what will happen is, is Navision doesn't explicitly show you a back order. But because we've received two and we ordered three, it is implied that there's a back order. So you don't see a column that says quantity on back order. You just need to do math in your head, and you can see that there's a back order. So I'm going to go ahead and click on post, and I'm going to choose receive, and click OK. All right, now I have my quanti quantity received. Sorry about that. I'm, uh, I didn't mean to resort this. Let's stay here. Well, I resorted my lines. So the quantity received is two, and the quantity to receive has been replaced with one. Remember that setup in the purchase and payable setup where it says remainder? It's going to populate the remainder automatically. If we had that set to blank, we would see two here and we would just see a blank field here, okay? So again, time passes. We go ahead and we process the remaining item. Quantity to receive is one. We're not gonna receive our freight yet. So I'm gonna zero that out, and now I'm gonna go ahead and post the remainder. All right, now the next step is you would receive the invoice from the vendor. So somebody probably in accounting would go in here and again, they would go to the purchase order list just like we did before. Let me back up. They would find the purchase order that they received the invoice for, and they would just double click on it or click on edit. And here they'll put in the vendor's invoice number, and they're probably going to replace the document date with the date of the invoice. So there will be a document date on that invoice, and that's what drives the terms, right? So if it's net 30, it's going to come off of this date. So we want to change the date to indicate the date on the invoice. There we go. And now we want to go ahead and update if there's a change in the cost. Let's say that the freight was a little bit less. We can certainly change this at that point. But what will happen is or I'm going to get an error message because this has already been released. So somebody who's doing this needs to have permission to reopen this particular PO to make that sort of a change. Same with the quantity. So let's say that we ordered 100 pieces, we got 99, and we're never going to get that back ordered piece. They don't, it's discontinued or damaged, it doesn't exist anymore. Then you would need to change the quantity to indicate 99 instead of 100. So somebody needs to have that permission to be able to reopen this because if you think about it, this is a PO that was already released and sent to the vendor. So we can't just arbitrarily reopen these things and make changes. So what will happen now is I'm going to press F5 to get rid of that error message, and then I'm going to reopen this, and now I'll go ahead and make a change to my, my freight. So if it's a little bit more, I can change it. That could trigger approvals in your system if you needed to. If it's less, that's great. We're not worried about that. So now I've put in my, my invoice number, my document date, and I've made changes to my costs. Again, the item cost may be different as well, and that, that will be an internal discussion as to how you want to handle that if it's more or less. Now we want to go ahead and, and receive an invoice, the, remain, the remainder of the purchase order. So I'm going to go ahead and click on post, and I'm going to leave receive an invoice. And the reason I'm doing that is because I never received my freight line. It's still waiting out there to be received. 
it's a GL account, so you don't really receive it, but we receive the invoice. So receive an invoice, I click OK, and that's going to take care of the, the remainder of this PO. So what happens now is that PO disappeared from my purchase order list because it's been completely processed. Everything's been received that's going to be received, everything that's been has been invoiced that's going to be invoiced, and now it's going to live under my posted documents. And I can look at my posted purchase invoices. Let me just, let's see here. And if I view that, here I see the final invoice and the total. All right, that concludes our lesson on processing purchase orders. Thanks for watching this Archer Point video. If you found it helpful, make sure to check out our website and blog at www.archerpoint.com. Additionally, if you have any questions regarding our products, services, or information in this video, feel free to email us at info at archerpoint.com. Thanks.